What's up guys? It's Chewy the Brick here. So for those of you who are following on Instagram, you guys know that I've been working on doing a resto mod on my 69 Ford F250. It's a Ranger Camper Special. Power steering, power brakes, front discs, air conditioning, factory shoulder belts, fully loaded truck for its age. So I'm going to start with the heart of the beast, which is this 390 that I bored 30 over which puts me at 395.9 cubic inches, so I'll just call it a 396 FE. So this is the start of the build series, so I've gone and done some of the uh, prep work on the block so far. I got the uh, cam bearings and the main bearings installed into the block, got the freeze plugs installed into the freeze plug galleys, and then painted the block as well. So we are at the point now where we're ready to start today's process, which is going to be installing the camshaft and the crankshaft. So that will be today's episode. And this is going to be a multi-part series of the build along the way and the process of that. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the camshaft I selected for this build, I went with a uh, comp cam thumper. A little bit more of an uh, aggressive street cam, if anything. Uh, 515 lift on the intake, 501 on the exhaust. And uh, the budget for this build did not allow me to buy a roller setup, so I went with just a basic flat tappet from Comp instead. So this will be the camshaft that I will be installing into this 396. In order to get that guy in there, I'm going to go ahead and remove this cam plate here. And this block started its life as a 360 blocks, and I have a set of 390 GT heads, of 390 crank and rods for this build, and then an Edelbrock single plate intake. So it'll be a little bit of a mild and wild build. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my assembly lube for my bearing surfaces in here for the camshaft and then I am not going to be running the comp assembly lube on here. The uh, comp assembly lube that comes with this stuff in my opinion is really really thin and kind of useless for really breaking in a camshaft and most of the local shops and FE guys that I've talked to in my area have said get a tube of uh, just a lube Molly graph, high pressure grease, and when you install the camshaft, just cover every lobe very, very liberally with grease. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that stuff and we'll get started on installing the camshaft. So I went ahead and got a bunch of stuff ready. So I have the cam retainer plate here with the factory Phillips bolts in them. So what I'm going to do, use a little bit of blue Loctite on here so these guys don't back out at all because that would just be a catastrophe. And the book notes 20 or 15 to 25 foot pounds on those so I'm going to go ahead and install those at 20. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite on here on this cam retainer. Ooh, might have been a little too much. If you guys hear any wind in the background, I apologize. We do have a uh, weather system coming in currently, so it's been pretty windy most of the day here. 
I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. On that upper bolt. Go ahead and thread that guy in there. Just kind of get it started by hand. A little hold it. I'm going to take the second bolt, same thing. Just put a little bit of uh, thread locker on the threads there. Thread it in. And also what I did before I got this all put together is I put a thin sheen of assembly of that royal purple onto the face of the camshaft here on this plate so it wouldn't wear on its initial startup. I'm going to go ahead and grab the torque wrench here, which as I stated, set right at 20 foot-pounds. I'm going to go ahead, time these guys on here. And these are going to want to try and cam out on you, so I'm probably going to move you guys over here a little bit. Move you all this way. Get you guys straight on view. And these are a number three fill-ups on these. And like I said, I'm going to have quite a time trying to get these to not cam out on me here. Well, can't get the uh, bit to stay in there for me. And I know that those are probably more than tight enough. And especially with Loctite on them, I'm sure they're not going to go anywhere. But just for peace of mind, I'll back this off back to 15 foot pounds and see if maybe it clicks. Just to humor myself. Go on the lower end of that spec on here. Nope, it's just going to came out of these. Well, these are the original hardware on here, so I'm not surprised, so I don't want to run the risk of stripping out these fill-ups. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave that for the time being. So, next step from here now for me, let's roll this guy over, get the main caps off, and go ahead and prep a rear main seal, and go ahead and drop the crank into here. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself set up for that and bring you guys back. So I did a little bit of prep work here off camera. Got the uh, nuts off the top of the main studs and the two rearmost main bolts for the rear main seal cap. And so what I'm gonna do is kinda go over the instructions here pretty quick. I got a Felpro rear main seal. I bought the whole Felpro head gasket kit and whatnot. So it comes with all the gaskets and seals and everything else I'm gonna need for this build. And the instructions say to install the seal halves the large sealing lip must be positioned forward to the front of the engine. Make sure the parting lines of the seals are offset in relation to the block and the main cap by about 3 eighths of an inch. This will reduce the chances of leakage by ensuring proper lip alignment and preventing shaving of the backside of the seal bead. For your convenience, a plastic insulation aid is provided to help prevent damage to the backside of the bead. So, these are the rear main seal halves here and a little guide they're referring to. So the instructions say to prevent a seal or to uh, help a seal put a little bit of dab of RTV on either end of the offsets of the seal so that when it's in the engine it'll have a little bit of a uh, gasket on there. What I'm also going to do is put a very very light coat of RTV on both halves of this and install them in. So I'm going to go ahead and get the one on the block installed first at the backmost main cap, then put the one in the backmost main cap, and I'll bring the crankshaft over and get it installed. Alright, so the next portion of today's video is going to be installing the crankshaft on the 396 here. I'm coming back at you guys the next day. And so today's process is going to be getting the rear main seal back on main cap number 5 installed at the back of the block and slowly just getting the crankshaft installed. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up for you guys and we'll go over that process. So for the first part of the crankshaft install into the block I'm going to start 
over here at rear main cab number five. The reason I'm going to start over here first is I'm going to install the blocks rear main seal. So I went with a fill pro kit here. Little focus. Well, the Fell Pro part number on here is a P30138-1. These are for 360s to 428s. So, what you need to do is in the rear main seal groove here, is there's a tendency, especially since I had this block line honed, there's a tendency that there's a sharp lip right here. If you run your finger along it, sometimes you'll feel it's kind of a sharp edge. So I went in with a really, really fine knife sharpening stone and just drug it back and forth like this a couple times just to clean it off so it wasn't so sharp and went in with some bright clean, cleaned off any of the stone dust, cleaned off any of the block material so it's a nice clean mating surface. I also went in with some bright clean on these sides of the block here and where the main cap rests onto the block because I will be putting RTV on there as well to help get a better seal so I don't have any oil leaks. So, what I'm going to do here, go ahead and grab my canister of RTV that I got. And I'm going to put a little bit on my finger here real quick for y'all. Just a little bit, just enough to put a real thin bead on here. Just like so. What I'm going to do, come on to the back side of the block here. Now on these FE rear main seals, there's kind of a square side and a sloped side of this seal. And what you're going to do is install this rear main with the sloped side towards the back of the block. So I'm going to go ahead, take my RTV here, put just a real, real thin bead on the bottom of this guy here. Get this all spread on. Just like so. And again, this is not to create a seal, but this is to aid with a seal. So the goal with this is to not bury it in RTV so that it's chunky and globby. You're just kind of looking for a real, real thin bead on here just to aid with that seal around here onto the top put a little bit on here just like so wipe that off of my towel here now in this rear main kit that is included in this little baggie there is a shoehorn tab in here and what this is as I drop it into the engine so what this is for is for a 3 8 gap on the rear main you want these offset, so you're going to want one portion offset into one side of the block and one protruding from the block to help offset any leakage. I'm going to go ahead and rest this guy down into the block. Just like so. Kind of slide it a little bit back and forth, help spread that RTV in there, help create a seal. And now what I'm going to do is come over here with this shoehorn that's provided with the kit. And this is just a, a uh, rough measurement. This doesn't have to be overly precise because this is a hard rear main. So when you install the uh, rear main cap on here, it will kind of self-adjust into position. So I'm going to say that's pretty satisfactory there. I'm happy with that. And what I'm going to do is grab my RTV again. Get another little bead on my finger. Just a little, little ball here. Perfect. That's just enough. What I'm going to do is right on top of this, I'm going to put a little dab right here. And what that's for is that when these two halves of this rear main, so we can imagine that this is already in the rear main, or in the uh, rear main cap itself, and that this will be sitting in the block this way. And what it'll do is that this will be an unsilicone side that will have silicone so that when it comes together it'll help create a better seal so I'm gonna go ahead and just apply a little bit on there just like so perfect so that that takes care of the block portion now what I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm also going to put some RTV 
on the vertical portions of the block and where the actual main cap rests onto the block. Help it seal a little bit better and again you're not looking for an overabundance of RTV but you're looking for a thin coat of it to help aid with a seal, not create it. So I'm gonna bring RTV back up in here. Put a real thin bead on that side. Come around. Put a thin bead there. I'm going to drag across a thin bead on either side here, just like so. And now what I'm going to do is go back in, go ahead and spread that so it's a real, real thin coat of RTV. And this is a Napa brand, it's just black RTV, so it's oil resistant, and I believe it's uh, temperature resistant up to, I think, a maximum of about 300 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and mix that all in so it's a nice thin coat. Same thing on this side. Kind of spread the love around on that side. Now once you do it this way, what you're going to also want to make sure is you're going to want to come back in with like a paper towel or a rag. Probably a Q-tip would be better, a little bit more precise. And what you're going to want to do is go back in and clean up on the bearings themselves because you don't want any RTV on those bearings. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this other side as well at the same time. Just like so. So, as you can see, it's just enough spray around in here to help aid with the seal once that rear main cap's in here. So I am going to go ahead and move on to the next step. So the next step following this is you want to lubricate all of the main bearings in the block. So I'm going to zoom you all out. And just like so. And as mentioned previously, I'm using a Royal Purple Max Tough Assembly Lube on this. I've had pretty good luck with this stuff in the past, so I'm not going to change up my methods now when I find something that works. And you want to kind of put a pretty liberal coat of Assembly Lube on to each of the bearings here. Once you got your lube on there, you want to kind of go in, spread it around. I'll probably go back in and add a little bit more onto these, actually. It looks like a pretty thin coat compared to what I would like. I'm just kind of smear all this around onto the bearings. And like I said, I'll come back in, add a little bit where it's needed. Just like that. There we go. That's much better. And then a side note, in the instructions for the rear main seal, it does say that if you're going to do an immediate break-in period on the engine, that you need to apply a coat of oil to that rear main seal so that it seats and seals properly. The instructions also notate that if the engine is going to be sitting for a duration of time before it is fired up, to go ahead and put a coat of grease on there. So before I drop the crank in, I will also be applying a thin, or I will be putting a thin coat of grease onto the back of the crankshaft where the main bearing rides for the rear main seal. All right, it's just like that. I'm gonna say that's pretty good on lubrication on there. So I am gonna go ahead and grab the crankshaft here and set it in. Now you've probably noticed by this point I do have studs sticking up. These are all ARP main studs with the engine and the crankshaft was locally reground and polished 20 under on the rods and mains because when I got a hold of it it had already had a previous 1010 grind on it. Ooh, I almost forgot my own step. I almost forgot to put the grease on. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab the grease, put a little bit on that back. So I got a smear of grease on my finger. I'm going to go ahead and apply that onto the crank real quick. Go ahead and get a little bit more. Didn't quite get a thick of a coat as I wanted. Just like that. All right, I'm going to wipe my fingers. Alrighty, so with the grease on the crank there, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the crankshaft and set it in. You want to go ahead and go straight down so this to not hit any of the studs. So, just like that, as you guys can see, crankshaft's in the block. So, what I'm going to do and prep first for my torque sequence is the rear main cap. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything ready and set up first and bring you guys back where I'm ready to do that. So, to finish up the rear main install on the block, I'm going to take your number 5 cap here and roll it over. So, since I swapped to a ARP stud kit, the how the rear main cap is designed on the block, the machine shop had to put a uh, recess here, as you can see, I believe it's a 320 thousandths recess into the block, or into this cap, so that the ARP studs would fit below the main cap, that way the oil pan would bolt down onto that. So, that's probably why, if you guys are wondering, this looks a little different on here. Otherwise, this process is completely the same. So, this is the portion that faces the front of the block. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this guy over. And now I'm going to get my tube of RTV that I have here. Set my rear main down. And I'm going to go ahead, take this RTV, and put just a little clump onto my finger. Now, same thing as in the block, you're going to go ahead and take this, figure out where your front is. So, since the front of the block on the main cap would be facing that way, I'm going to go ahead and put it so that the, the flat edge on the seal is facing towards the front of the block. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process of a thin, 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 thin coat of RT, RTB. Again, this, this coat of RTB is not to create a seal, kind of like replacing a gasket on a water pump with just RTB. This is simply just to aid in the seal in hopes that it won't leak. Is this required? No. It will greatly improve your chances of not having a rear main leak. And nobody wants to do that in, once the engine's in the truck. Once you get a brand new engine in your truck, you want to just go rip around and not have to fix your rear main. So, go ahead and install that in. Just like so. I keep forgetting my towel. Alright, gonna wipe the RTV off my finger and just confirm with myself the cap now sitting up towards me, that is the front of the block, which means that the square side of this seal will drop in just like so. Just like that. Perfect. Same thing, I'm gonna kind of rub it around in there a little bit, help spread that RTV to promote a healthy rear main seal. Then I'm gonna grab the provided shoehorn with the rear main kit. Confirm that it does need to go up just ever so slightly. And down now. And just like that, beautiful. So now that we have that taken care of, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a light coat of RTV on the sides.
both sides. And I'm not going to worry about the face here because there's some already on the block, but I'm more worried about the sides here where there's the vertical portion of the rear main seal kit. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my RTV back up here and just do a light, light coat, just like so. And we will go ahead and spread this on as thinly and as evenly as possible and to help this side seal. And take a little bit of the excess off there since there's a fair amount on the block. Rub that in. Then we're going to flip it over so that it doesn't lose any of that RTV. And we are going to put a little bit more on my finger now. Just like that. And then continue by putting this on the side here. Nice thin coat. Okay. Take some of the excess off there, spread it onto the other side. And there we go, just like that. Now, same thing as on the block, kind of want to make sure that your face here is clean, nothing's going to get onto that bearing. And now, what I'm going to do, there's a little bit of excess here on the tip of my RTV tube. So I'm going to take a little bit onto my finger, about the size of a grain of rice. I'm going to go ahead and just apply it right here onto the other ceiling face of that rear main. Now, it, we are all ready to install this main cap into the block. So I'm going to get set back up and show you guys how to install your mains. So now that we are ready to install our main caps, I'm going to go ahead and start back here at the rear main seal. Same thing as before, using some Royal Purple assembly lube. I'm going to go ahead and put some on to the crankshaft here as well as the main bearing. You can never have too much lubrication on your initial build. If anything, a little bit extra lube, probably a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and lube up this bearing. Just like so, and that's why I like this stuff, is it's nice and thick and it adheres and doesn't go anywhere. So, what I'm going to do, since this is the rear main side, and these are offset of each other's, I'm going to go ahead and set this in. Let it slide in on itself, and you're going to feel a little bit of resistance where that rear main, and just like that, slides right on. So, I do have to torque these in, but I'm going to go ahead and set all the rest of the caps on first, in order. So... Same process all the way through. Lube the crank and lube the bearing. And don't get stingy with your assembly lube. A little bit extra never hurts. It's cap number four. And make sure, noted on your main caps, there's an arrow on them that's facing forward. There's an indentation arrow on the uh, stock forward main caps that'll point towards the front of the block. And make sure that they are in order, because the order of these does matter. Since these were remachined, they're all marked differently. So the order for me is a little bit different. And as I stated at the start of the crankshaft portion, this is going to be the longer portion of this video. So if you guys want to skip ahead past all this, I'll go ahead and put a timestamp in the video for y'all at a convenient point to help skip through all this. Set that on.
So now with all the main caps on the block, I'm going to go ahead and go get myself set up with my ARP hardware and get everything lined up on the rear main cap and ready to install on this. Then we will go through the torquing process and sequence. So I will bring you guys back here in a moment. So the last part of the rear main seal here is all we have left is the side portions of the seal and the two retainer wires that hold them in place. So in the same fashion with the actual rear main itself what you want to do is put a very thin coat of RTV because these will slide down into these grooves here. So you really want a little bit of a coat of RTV so those go in there and help promote a healthier seal. It'd be very unfortunate to spend all this time and money on an engine and just have a simple rear main seal ruin all your fun and your cost of building your engine. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little bead of black RTV on my finger here, about pea sized or so. And I'm going to go ahead and just spread that onto this last portion of the rear main seal kit. Go ahead and on both sides, front, back of this wedge. So with the wedge covered, what you can see is there's an opening here in the cap against the block. You're going to want to press this down into the cap as far as you can. So I will press that in and bring you guys back. Well, inevitably, with the uh, blessing and grace of technology, the camera decided to quit recording. And... To be quite frank, I'm not going to take this main cap off just to show you guys how to install those seals. So what I ended up doing was I put RTV on both of these seals, slid them in against the block and the cap, down as flush as possible. You Preferably you want them all the way to the bottom, but I am uh, hoping there's enough of a seal there that I don't need to do that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take these two pins. What you do is they install right here on the cap side of the seal here. And you just go ahead and drive those in. Which what this does is it wedges it, this seal in to create a nice tight seal. I'm going to get that as flush as possible on that side. I'm going to go ahead and start this one. Oh, did not 
want to do that. If you want to try and hit these in straight, don't do what I just did and slightly bend the nail over. So, I have a nail punch that I'm going to use here. Very simple tool. And you're going to want to take this, and you're going to want to recess that nail just, just below flush with this cap. Same thing, just kind of just below flush. That way it's just below this cap. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is you're going to want a box cutter or a box cutter blade. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the blade out of this knife. And what you're going to want to do is go flush with the block. And go ahead and just trim off that slight excess there. And there shouldn't be very much. Yeah, there's not very much there at all. This one, there will probably be a little bit more, because like I said, I don't think that seals down quite all the way, but there should be, according to the instructions, about a 16th to an 8th sticking out the top. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that guy flush as well. And just like that. I'll come back in and do a little bit of cleanup right there. Yeah, so there's still a little bit coming off, not much. I'm gonna go ahead and trim that. All right, so with those trimmed down, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this one up a little bit more here, not much. And then with those trimmed down flush, what I'm gonna go ahead and do, put a little bit of extra insurance peace of mind on this, is I am gonna go ahead and grab my tube bar TV and I'm going to put a very 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 thin bead right up on top of here come on inevitably I grabbed the one caulking gun that doesn't want to work there we go basically I'm just putting enough in there to kind of fill in up over the Top of this guy. Why is this not working? Well, regardless, you're going to want to put a little bit of RTV on here just to kind of fill in that seal, help it seal a little bit better. So, just like that, I mean, I'm just literally covering it up. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that on both sides. And then, for what I wanted to accomplish today, this completely wraps up this video so if you guys would like would like comment share subscribe that'd be phenomenal helps the channel out a lot if you guys also want to go check me out on instagram my instagram is at chewy the brick and i will catch you guys on part two